so easy to find. I've always I've become kind of curious, why do some of your emails come from Angela Mills and some from Mills Angela? And when you search, you get a totally different, two different streams, but they appear to be the same address. So I think it's because um, I'm actually homesick today and I've been working off my phone. Oh dear. And so I think that that's probably why that's happening is my phone registers differently in the system than my desktop at work. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, you're sick. That's all right. I'm getting tested tomorrow. Hopefully all will be well. Yeah. Thank you very much for your help. Sure. Bye. Bye-bye. So we'll just wait another couple of minutes. How's everybody doing? We're doing fine, but Angela just said she started the recording, so we shouldn't chit chat. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's never any chit chat in uh, official Amherst meetings. There is. It depends on. <laughs> there is actually. I'm, I'm an unplugging. Just, there's actually tons of chit chat. So each, I was gonna, you know. Different groups have different group culture around things like that, and. Uh, I appreciate ours. Holly's going to be a little bit late. So we're just, uh, let's wait a bit for John M and then um, go ahead. Well, I don't know if this is. Uh, there he is. Great. Hey, John. Howdy. Hello. Greetings, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. I'm on. Don't, Thank you. No 11 year old cursing on Zoom, please. That's just not what we want to hear. Hi. Oh, for you. I know you don't do that sort of thing. You're not that kind of kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm walking the dog. It's freezing. Yeah. So, this meeting, we have two big goals. We're going to make a uh, fine tune our plan for interviewing staff and key committee members we can go over the excellent questions and uh, outline that Liz sent. And then we'll look at the most recent version of, of the participatory budgeting concepts that Kathy sent. So those are the two big substantive things. Does that work for people? Yes. Before I have to go at 430 if that's okay. I just ha I have to. Uh, um, no. Oh, yeah, okay. No. <laughs> Um, I want to read this thing from Baker again. Pursuant, although I've noticed I've been attending a lot of town meetings. Everybody, does, not everyone does this, but we've been asked to do it. So, have we been called to order? I good question. I thought I um, anybody all right, we're calling the meeting to order at three thirty-three, but it probably should say three thirty-one because we reviewed the goals. And I want to uh, uh, thank John. Fensky for agreeing to take minutes at this meeting. Man. I'm going to be organizing it ahead of time so we don't have to, nobody's on the spot at the moment. And Liz has generously agreed to take them at our January 7th meeting. So thank you. So the meeting, calling the meeting to order at 3.33 and we reviewed the meeting goals. Um, I'm going to now read this thing. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 18, this meeting uh, of the participatory budgeting commission is being conducted by remote participation. I'm now gonna have a roll call. Everybody, let's say everybody's name and you respond if you're here. Kathy Shane. Here. Meg Gage, here. Liz Larson. Here. John McCabe. Here. Can you see me now? Yeah, great. Yes. yes, completely. You can. Okay, good. Well, not every part of you, but we yeah, still wait. <laughs> Oh, good, but that's a good thing. <laughs> John Page. Here. John F. Fensky. I'm here. Great. Um, I want to remind you that's being recorded. The meeting's being recorded and could be shown on the Amherst Media. And it's also available for people who are doing the minutes and want to, a refresher, if you 
lost conscious lost not con lost concentration or <laughs> or um, missed something or wanted to capture what you actually said yourself. I find sometimes I'm when I'm the minute taker, I forget to write down what I said. Um, and uh, if you have any background noise, feel free to put yourself on mute when you're not speaking. Okay, uh, let's review the agenda. As I said, we have two primary t t tasks, although a couple of little things also I think we probably wanna do. Uh, John has agreed to take the minutes. Does this look like the right order? Does anybody wanna change the order? I put the interviews first because I thought that's what we actually have to do at this meeting. Um, uh, and then the uh, this further discussion of the draft that Kathy has amazingly pulled off once again. That's saying if you want to get something done, ask a busy person. Uh, Kathy uh, embodies that. I don't I don't know anybody as busy as you. So thank you. <clears throat> Can I see you guys? Not hearing any comments. I'm assuming this agenda is okay. Kathy, I think you're muted. Looks good to me. Yeah. Um, I just want to take a minute to appreciate our organ, our commission's culture and people showing up and paying attention and being prepared. Uh, I also appreciate having now sat in on a lot of other town meetings how how uh, candid people are that we we use each other's first names and we we're not a group that knew each other before and we've really. I think trust and listen to each other, and especially with the curveball of the pandemic. Yes. Yes. Um, I just appreciate. It. I was at a recent meeting, for example, where they were came to re approve the minutes, and they had to have some, like several minutes of silence, so people could read them for the first time. So, Mazel Tov to us. Uh, so let's take the John. Uh, let's look at the minutes. The John McCabe created. Okay, I have an observation about the minutes. Um, it seems that everybody was there, but then there were only six people who voted on the roll call. I, I guess Liz is missing, but who I was I missing. Oh, okay. Everybody was everybody was here. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good catch. So the roll the call, where was that? Nope, everybody's on on it. It was the seventh. Okay. There are seven people listed. No, but no, under number two approval of the minutes, there are only six people listed. Oh. Oh. So shall Who's we? Who's the seventh yeah. person? Who are we missing today? Can, can we're missing Holly today? Oh, I'm sorry. Of course. Can you do me a favor? And can you put it up on the screen? Because I, sure. I guess I can help. I can. I don't print things out in advance, so I, I can leave this and go look at the document. But if you forget it. I've got it. I've got all of these things right here. Now, was there anybody who is not present? I, I know I was doing remote for that meeting for the October 1st meeting for my car. Um, so I may have abstained or was there someone else who missed that meeting and abstained from the vote to approve the minutes? I, I'm sorry, this is really nitpicking. <laughs> no, it isn't. Okay. <laughs> I think I know, it, I there, right? as, as Meg is pulling them up, I think it's also all right. Um, uh, it's right here. Yeah, that's just, I just didn't, I should have put her down. Uh, who am I missing? So they, Holly's there, Meg, me. Who's missing? John? I'm missing, but. Um, oh, Liz. Yeah. So should we amend them to be, that's why they're draft. That's right. That's because I did them. They should definitely and, be drafted. You know, the only thing I'd point out here, I mean, this is just uh, pure <laughs> unnecessary editing. Roll call vote to approve the minutes. You could just say unanimous um, because we. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could do that. I just copied the, the version. Whoever did last one, I just used yeah, that. I mean, and it's easier to do it that way too, so. Um, the only thing I can tell you that I, I kind of punted on was when you go to the end of this, uh, end of the meeting, end of the minutes, 
we we then thrashed out a bunch of other questions and I didn't go there. I just said, we agreed that, that Liz Larson would, would write them up. I just didn't have any more time. Yeah, so no, then, that, that, that was fine. Okay. Um, I had two comments, uh, correction. One is a correction, Sam McLeod's name. He is um, on the, the list of people to talk to for a CPA committee. Mm -hmm. His name is actually, it's Mac, M-A-C-L-E, yeah, M-A-C, capital L, uh, no, O-E, uh, sorry, E-O-D. Oh, E-O-D, yeah. correct. Okay. I'm thinking of the cop and, show from the 70s. Yep, and then uh, further down on the list for uh, under this UMass, Sarah Barr is actually with Amherst College. Oh, okay. Where is that? Let's see. Uh, where the point where the pointer is right now. <laughs> Just go down to the last do go down to the last um thing, Molly Mead and Sarah Barr, Meg. Yeah, I've got it. Say Amherst College. Uh yeah, Sarah Barr's with Amherst College. I don't the, I Molly think the others are all Molly, UMass, Mead is, but... Molly Mead is Amherst College too. Okay. So Does maybe it? we should find some more people. Yeah. I think. Should we, should it be the beginning of the sentence say UMass and Amherst College contacts? Would that be a I think this works fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that works. We should probably, I, I'm happy to do that. Um, when we get a little better verbiage, um, maybe just, just look through the poli sci department. If it's, the poli sci department is so huge at UMass. Just look and see if there's anybody that I'm just cold, cold email them and see if they're interested. Okay, so for right now, if those were the only people we mentioned during the meeting, we'll just. That's right. Yes. Um, what we can do is come back to that during this meeting when we finish our other two topics. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, John, are you able to make these edits and get them into uh, Angela as the not draft minutes? Meg, you can just, if we approve I it right just now, just, just do it now and. I think you did. I'll do you it. Get I'll, the edits and they're I'll, done. We respell his Sam's name and get rid of this. All right, I'll do it. No problem. Just delete that. Because I have done. it all right here. If you're doing it on track changes, just accept the edits. Um, I'm not. I'm just doing them in red, but I can change it. No okay. big deal. I'll take care of it. It'll take two minutes. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And um, by, by the way, I have no problem with this level of detail in the minutes. I think it's fabulous. But what we've generally been told is capturing a sense the way you said, and we had further discussion on such and such, that's fine, particularly because we also have a video. Right. So we've been told we're supposed yeah. to capture. And I, also, I assume that the, Liz was going to have a nice list of questions that would be a, a sort of an exhibit rather than me just trying to remember what everybody said. Right, and it's it's just really good to think of it that we're not having to reproduce a transcript. You right. know, so mm -hmm. when you want to capture something, it's important. I'm not saying don't do detail, but it's right. fine to uh, decrease the burden when needed. On yeah, minutes. this is this is the style I learned working at the library. Yeah. Okay, I think so, I, I thought so I excuse me. Did we take a vote? Do we have to do a roll call? Just about to do that. Any more comments on the minutes? Um, all in favor, I guess we'll do a roll call. I'll stop sharing. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Meg, yes. Liz? Yes. John M? Yes. John P? <laughs> yes. John F? Yes. OK, it's unanimous approval of the minutes. Great. And, and the, the minute taker could just notice that Holly wasn't there at the start. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I am going to pull up the agenda. Um, we actually don't need it because um, we're gonna go now to planning the interviews with the town staff. Um, I wanna thank Liz for the excellent um, uh, questions that she sent yesterday. Did everybody get a chance to look at them? And again, I would really appreciate it bringing it up on the screen. So if we have, we can do real time, time comments on it. And if right. Liz wants to keep control, she could show a screen or Meg, you could either way. I just find it easier. Right, Liz, do you want to 
I was wondering, do we want to talk about the, I was just about to ask the questions first or the That's people with, right. whom we're, with whom we're, let's do the questions since Liz has them up there. I'm sorry, I, I have trouble with screen sharing here. Or I can do it. No, no, I, I, I thought that I had done it. You did. It is. Except it's also showing you my whole screen, right? No, no. you've gone. You're right, we're down the side, and here's and here's your screen. It's fine. We've got a, a screen in the middle, and then it's fine. Okay. So, All right. Excuse me, Meg. Meg um, I have a question. Are we going to look separately at this one pager? I forget what it's called. You know, the description that's going to be handed out. Will we consider that at the end? Yeah, well, that's what I was just starting to ask before we jumped into this. The three aspects of this conversation. Who are the people we're going to speak with? And some of us feel we need maybe an expanded list. Um, what are the questions that we're going to ask and how much variety and how much specificity, which is what Liz's piece gets at. And then the third is the description of our work, which I definitely think we need to look at as well and edit. So um, people su suggested starting with Liz's questions, which are now up on the screen. Is that an okay start? Good, and then we'll go to um, whom people with whom we're gonna speak. And then we have a little time to refine the description of our work, but I thought it was, the one thing that was a good start, but it definitely needs you know, a little more work like everything else. Okay, so um, we're going to now, uh, Look at these questions, um, and we're assuming that the people. My ex, my reaction at first was it's kind of a cold. It starts jumps right in the deep end. So we're assuming that people have. Oh, is that Holly? Hi, Holly. Welcome. Hi there. Um, assuming that they will have read the one-page description of what participatory budgeting is and so on. So um, let's take a. Oh, let's I'm, just, I'm sorry if if. If we want to assume that they're going to be reading that first, then should we be approaching this in the way that they will be approaching it and start with the one pager? Or is that a lot more in depth? I think it's better to start with this since we have it up. And, okay. But what do others think? I think we need a real strategy for these questions so that they're useful, mm. including that the, the hardest part of what we do here together is coming up with the strat or the most important thing is a strategy for how we're going to get the most useful information possibly varied from person to person. What kind of de detail do we want and so on? So um, I just have a, a general observation about the questioning and it relates to the one pager as well. Um, uh, we're going to put some work into that and I think that's great and uh, we can hope that everybody we talk to has read the one pager, but I don't think we can assume it. Right. And um, I mean, my, my experience is that, you know, busy people do what they want to do. Um, so I, I would think we'd want to open with a very general question, which might even uh, let us know how much they know about participatory budgeting or the work of our, our commission. Right. Something just along the lines of uh, what message you know, what message do you have for the Participatory Budgeting Commission? Or what do you think of the concept? Just something general like that to right. break the ice and get their general idea. And then <clears throat> likewise, at the end, we should close with, is there anything else that we ought to know or that you're, you're thinking right. of after our discussion? That's just a great my way of thinking about it. I see nodding. I, I agree with John. I, I, it's always good to start from the general and work to the specific. Maybe the last question just above uh, from the first section, maybe that something a variant of that is the lead is the lead general question in the best of all possible worlds, and something about or you know but something something um, broad for starters, um, as opposed to what works and what doesn't. Or we could start with just simply were you able to read the one page description <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and see what they do you have any questions because yeah. That's really what we, we don't want to talk. I don't know. I think that would help focus the discussion. Does that make sense to Liz to put up here? Did you have a chance to read the one, whatever we're calling it? Um, well, here, here I have a, uh, 
I agree with everything that's being said right now. So I don't, I'm not saying anything, not agreement. So the opening, putting an opening, we're here from the com participatory budget committee commission, something about, do you know about it, whatever, but we, we can make this one document. We're keeping sure. it separate right now. So we can in advance send them the blurb that says something about the budgeting commission and say questions we plan on asking you are attached, you know, and so it's literally one document rather than, did you read that document now this? So I'm thinking of the way we, um, when we're bringing in people, so for statements of interest for participation, the council, you know, we're, we're presenting, here's what this committee does. And um, these are the, and then we also send them, these are the questions we're gonna ask you. So I think we could just, we can think of this becoming one document um, while- I agree. Mm -hmm. Question though is whether we go are gonna ask everyone the same questions and maybe we want to- No, 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 no Meg, I'm talking about tailored things. So oh, we go okay, great. Full bottom, so we have a blurb at the top that says, hi, we're this full of brush people. And, <laughs> and we're, here, we're here to talk about participatory budgeting. And then um, we're talking to you as um, leaders responsible for CPAC, or we're talking to you as leaders responsible for C, you know, so, and then, then the specific questions we're asking them would be framed. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So Does anyone agree with that? That's a, a little more work, but that's basically I, not. I really assume true. that's what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So um, it seems though that if it's all one document and they have the description, it's still relevant to ask. Did you have any questions about the section above? Totally. Yeah. Totally. I wasn't disagreeing with that. That's yeah. why I said. I mean, I'm totally. Did you have any questions? You know. What are we trying to work on? Um, because you know we're really here to to get some ideas about spe something specific from you. Um, right. That's what we say. Yeah. And I'd I'd like to add. I personally think it's uh, it may sound silly, but I think it's important to keep it to one side of an eight and a half by eleven sheet. The whole thing, yep. the so-called one pager, and the maybe it's an abbreviated list of questions. Maybe we the interviewers go in with something more elaborate, but you give them the flavor of the questions you're going to ask and making sure that everything fits on one sheet, one side of one sheet. Yeah. Yeah. I In 12 I, point. I totally agree. <laughs> I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, it's just so people don't feel like they've got to read uh, something elaborate. Um, but then we'll have to sh shorten quite a bit the description. Well, but, but Meg, we can send them two different, I'm not saying we can't send them two different documents. I'm just saying when we get to the question part, we can have a quick lead in up on top that says something and then segue in. Um, so we'll see how condensed we can get. Um, right. So going through these questions, shall we go through them first with a town manager? in terms of each uh, committee or person, or shall we go through them all and then go back and identify which would be? I, my, main, my main thought on this, I know we should raise hands. My main thought on this is I really like these questions, but I wanted to anchor them in specific committees, um, processes. Yes. So um, I wanted to break you know, it, I like each of them. So I wanted to say when we're talking to the town manager, we're particularly talking about the resident capital requests. All right. Those are the things that he's going to be involved with. And, um, you know, so then the, what works and what doesn't work, you know, so I'm just going to break. So this is a nice set of questions. So I just wanted to do a lead in that the town manager plus whomever would be asked something to focus on the resident capital requests. And then the CPA people would be asked to focus on CPA. So it just had a lead in sentence. When you think about the resident capital requests, right. what do you think works or doesn't work or something? You know, so it's that's, that's the opening sentence to whomever we're interviewing there. Okay, so when we send them the packet with, here's the, you know, quick blurb of 
what PBC is and our goal. Here's a list of the questions to expect from us. Then that question would open with, you know, you know, Paul, what works and, and doesn't work specifically in regards to resident capital requests. Right. So those can be tailored specifically within the documents that we send to them. Is that what you're? Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. And okay. Paul, is the, Paul is the toughest one because he sits on, he's not, I guess, he, is he in the room or not with the community development block grant, but he, he takes what the committee has recommended. It's only an advisory committee, their advisory, but but yeah, that's that's what I was thinking because I, I want them to focus, you know, I, you know, the bigger question I would love to ask Paul, but it's um, too much of a leading question. Do you think the addition of resident capital requests was a good idea or not? You know, it's we've only had them for a while. You know, are they are they in any way? Well, uh, you can you can ask a question that gets at that, like how is it working, right? Or how do you wish it worked? Or right, so and that's all I'm saying is like what works and doesn't work, yeah. in your view, with the resident capital requests. Mm -hmm. um, John, did you have your hand up? Yeah. So, John, um, I, I was just scratching my head, but I do have a comment. I I think, I think we should consider um, what one of the Johns said of maybe moving up even this best possible world question um, as as a uh, open ended kind of positive question um, because what works and what doesn't work, I wanna ask that very early on, but it is in inherently a little bit of a diving right into the, the structure of your committee or, or your, your it's, it's a little bit of a tough question I think to start with. So maybe I think that last one might be the best one to move up of the, in an ideal world, Paul, how would you like to see residents participate in capital requests? I think would be a, an easy first question um, to start the, the gears turning. And you might really, you might elicit very different, it depends, but you might elicit very different attitudes towards having, you know, our participatory budget process in the first place. Some people may find it that, you know, may, may have volumes to say on it. Others might say, I'm not sure why we need to do that at all, mm -hmm. um, de depending, but, but, you know, it would it'd be a good place to start just to get a sense of what their general attitude would be towards having more people participate as opposed to just the professionals. I totally agree moving that question to number one. Do we want to ask anywhere in here for uh, this some, sorry, did I interrupt someone? Go ahead. Um, that if there were charitable dollars for participatory budgeting, would they be open to a pro having a program? That would be a question for Paul, I guess, not CPA. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Meg. I mean, I'm hoping that that's how we kind of, we just threw that out there so that he didn't think we wanted to take part of his budget when we met with him. Um, we you know let him know that we'd love to explore with with either the philanthropic world or the academic world or both how how we might get something something additional something something uh, that doesn't come straight from the budget. Um, I can't, I would think that would make that would, that would get his ears perked up. What do others think? I think that might be getting a little bit too far into the weeds. Um, right now, don't we really want to capture? overall the uh, viability of such a program. And so for example, it could be something that is in this, this portion here with the flexibility within your budget. Um, perhaps there we could add something when talking to him saying if there were opportunities for other yeah. budget sources yeah. or other uh, funding sources, do you think that could work rather than making a separate yeah. Separate question. Where would that go, Liz? Uh, right up here. This in the one. Flexibility line. Yeah. Uh, the what one? So, so is there in, any flexibility in your budget to commit to fund yeah. residents. That's good. Um, I, I I just remember the conversations around the um, North Amherst Library, where every time Paul talks about it, he says this is moving forward in part because of private funds. So 
I think we should add that in some way. I, I think we could add it onto that question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and one one quick background on it is that when it was proposed, John, behind the scenes comment is this will not go forward unless forward. it is entirely private funding. <laughs> right. I was going to say the same thing. You said that was that the town manager said this is going forward largely because of private dollars. Only because. <laughs> he said entirely because of it. There absolutely right. wouldn't be happening otherwise. And, and I think for that reason that, um, especially for the town manager, but for all these committees, we are kind of um, poking at that we're going to be, we would like to take some power away from them um, mm. and allocate some money towards something else. So I think putting that in there might soften that question. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so, so we're thinking of putting it after part of the one, two, three, bullet four, or is it five? So so I've got it highlighted here. Okay, good. What I've just added. He's changing right. it on the screen as we Okay, got it. Sorry. Yep. Great. Okay, these are we're now talking about questions for Paul Bockelman. Any more comments on this? Which of the of these many questions is well um so the way I've set this up, these are just the general questions for the town officials, staff and committees. Mm -hmm. And then when we send out the packet, they would be tailored to, these are tailored to Paul Bachman, these are tailored to Sean, these are tailored to members of the CPA. So what I, but, I thought, let's do that now then. Should would it make sense to just put parens at the end of each one and then put the names of the people that, or the, the, the who's gonna be asked, who would pertain to? I, I think we need to ask, um, I don't know if there are any, don't we need to ask everybody the same questions? I, I, in fairness. Some of them. If, if, I, if I go down what Liz has put here, number one works for everyone. Yeah, right? so you just put everyone in parents. You know? you know, and number two works for everyone. So which is two? Is it the bullet that's... What works and doesn't work? Yeah. I'm just going bullet. Okay, okay. got it. But, but what I'm thinking, you know, so for, for each of the, when Liz said Taylor, in the best of all possible words, what would you like to see of the participation in residents in resident capital requests is the way we would tailor that, or in CPA project proposals. You know, right. that, so the question context changes by dropping in, we're talking to CPA people. Um, yes. You know, so that's, so it's, and then, um, can you describe the process for ranking assessing proposals? That's the third bullet. That worked to me for all of them also. Yeah, good. And then what current input do you get from staff or departments required to assess the proposals? What's interesting is 100% um, of the proposals for capital come from town staff, 100%. Uh, you know, and then when we move over to CPA, the most recent one is 80%. But, but I think it's still a good question for all, th all of them um, because it gets kicked back even in CPA. And Liz, you may know more for, I haven't watched the, the, uh, the or Polly, the um, block grant process. If something comes from people not as familiar with what to do, they will be asking staff on a, what do you think about the cost estimate? You know, do, is this in conflict with anybody? Um, does this fit within the guidelines of the pro? I mean, they're always, so I think that question, what current input do you get? Um, but then I would break it because the second part um, I would make that its own point. Could town staff be made available? That one I would make its own bullet. That's a separate thought. Its own separate thought, not a sub bullet under this one. Right. Okay. So the, you know, which, having been on the Charter Commission, the CPOs were, because originally that there was a, like one full-time position to so that participatory budgeting would have staff if it went forward. But I think it's the way Paul's handling it is good, but. But but can I just say something, Megan, CPO, whatever the larger vision for them is, 
the, the likelihood, I'm not saying they couldn't, but the likelihood that a CPO could help you price out your, exactly. you know, they wouldn't be able to do that. It would be some other staff person or how much is a cross road, a crosswalk or how much is a bridge. Um, so this says, could town staff be made available to assist with proposals? Um, and I would just boot, IG costing them out. Um, you know, the, the idea of the CPO there that Liz has is that the CPO can help the residents figure out whom to go to and help them get their questions answered more efficiently than if they're just- Well, that you know, makes- Okay, so this- this piece needs to be, this needs to be down with the other question then. That needs to go here. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All I'm saying is that it, it presumes that CPOs would be doing that way. But instead, you might say, you know, if, if something comes in and it's a sidewalk, right away, DPW is asked to give a, put a price tag on it. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than first we find the right CPO to have them go to no, but no, no, no. I'm not saying yeah. what's the right path. It's just ID but, pointing out. Yeah, or, yeah. Then that raises the whole thing of how DPW comes up with their costs. But anyway, <laughs> that's another topic. Um, no, but I think that they need <clears throat> to. I mean, this is a, probably an important one because to have a community folks with good ideas and good intentions. Um, Maybe it's maybe it would be better to have town staff say, "Yeah, I can call Guilford's office and we can get a, a, an idea." Because people have, sometimes have no idea that it costs a million dollars to to pave a little tiny road. They just don't even know how to. Those things can be answered up with a phone call pretty quickly without everybody having to have put in a meeting right. and time and whatnot. Right. So maybe someone could be an, like an expediter for the for the residents with their ideas. Uh huh. Great. Okay, keep it going here. And, and just let me build on this point right now. When on cap on the capital request, when the resident fills out a form, it goes to a specific person. And I think at this point, it's Sean Magnano. If it doesn't have a price tag attached to it, someone just says sidewalk or crosswalk, they could get a price tag for it. You know, say, you know, it's got a blank. You know, so what I think the way it's written right now is right, you know, on a, you know, what can we do to get something priced out if the person doesn't already have it? Um, and I'm assuming if someone says the one one I watched, which was pretty interesting, someone wanted to uh, renovate and change the clubhouse on Cherry Hill to make it a year round facility. And one when asked what it would cost, and he said, I have no idea. Isn't that your idea? That my idea is to, <laughs> can't can't someone tell me? He says maybe two hundred thousand dollars, and they said, well, maybe we need a study to figure out how much. He said, good. Let's. I'll ask for ten thousand dollars for the study. But it was like in real time. Help me. You know, it was like help me out here. Um, yeah. Right. Right. Well, we had estimates for our new traffic light in the middle of North Amherst that went from sixty thousand dollars to two hundred fifty thousand dollars depending on various circumstances, not, not much of a change in the light, but anyway, we got it for 60, so. But in any case, I, I like the wording of this. So I'm just, it's like, could, could, we, could we do this? Um, Great. Um, and it would apply, I think it applies to all of the ones we're asking about, CPA, CDB, you know, so I'm thinking each of these, is it unique? No, all of these work for the three major um, sources we're talking about. Okay, so now we're next one. It, so is this is this a, this this one right here? Is this a sub bullet or a separate bullet? Does it matter? I think it. I think it works as a. In my opinion, it works as a sub bullet because it's part of the same. Thought. Okay. All right, but this is for all, this yeah. question. Yeah. Okay, all right, so now we're down here with the flexibility, but we've already talked about that one, kind of. Well, um, this is the first time we've asked whether they'd set aside money, right? Is there any place we, that's the beginning of that thing. Yep. Yeah. So I don't think we've asked that until now. Yeah, 
No, I'm sorry. I meant as a group, we've discussed this question. Yeah, I, so. I think it's a great question and I would ask it. Um, I, I think I would definitely ask it of the capital projects and CPA. I'm a little less certain on the community development block grant. Okay. So is that RCR? Uh, you've got it up at what is RCR? I don't know what the, the rad, resident capital request. Yeah, yeah, that's RCR and okay. CPA is definite, but CPA, uh, CDBG, I think. That, that's not, no, that's got a defined source. Yeah. So I think it. Okay. Good. The next one seems to apply to um, everyone. I had a, a small wording. I Go for it. John? Um, I did have a, a wording idea on this one. Um, possibly, what, could it make sense to say, is there any flexibility within your budget to dedicate funds to resident proposals? Ah, good. It's a little more specific because um, I, I would argue, you know, a lot of CPA proposals are resident proposals, but they're organizations. So maybe mm -hmm. dedicated funds to resident proposals. I think that's a little more specific. Yeah. One of the things I'm wondering is that these different committees are in very different head spaces in terms of their uh, likelihood of being sympathetic to this. So CP CPAC, I know, is already wrestling with how to have more community input, how to have better uh, support for people who are submitting proposals. And they, they actually have a, I think John and Sarah have a subcommittee working on it. I guess we don't need to, that wouldn't change the questions, but I. I think we're going to find very different levels of receptivity to this among the different parties. Is that, I guess I that's. Agree. I agree. And that's what I'm just looking at the next one. What are the limitations? Um, uh, here's my, here's where I, I wouldn't ask this question. Um, I'm just highlighting it so we all know what we're talking yeah, about. So, yeah. So what I'm thinking is that this first set walking all the way through, we are going to be hearing from people. There's no way Jose, I'd set up a dedicated fund. Or we can't, we can't within the way CPAC works, we would love to get more proposals, but we can't set aside a fund. I think we're going to be getting that. Um, so what are the limitations? You know, the limitations are even the council can't get a dedic, you know, but so I'm not sure I would ask that highlighted bullet. I think if we take good notes, um, but is there a different thing? Would such a dedication require, so would it be more direct? Would we say, would dedicating funds require a separate bylaw or other kind of policy change. You know, so instead yeah. of saying, you know, so I'm trying to think of it, I think it's a good, but I wouldn't ask the beginning of it, it would. Right. Maybe there aren't limitations, right? But it's also not just the changing the, um, the, the funding part of it, it is the, um, how we, how residents would vote on them how that would happen. And then if the residents voted for something, but was vetoed by someone, I think that's what I was trying to capture there. But maybe, maybe this is something we don't ask now, but we leave that to be worked out by whoever has to implement our recommendation. Right. Well, I'm curious, I am curious. So I don't know whether I've got the wording right, but um if we got a response that we could not dedicate a set of funds unless there is a change in our committee charge, the bylaw that sets this up, you know, we don't, we, we would not be able to. Um, 
Is it captured by why or why not up here? And that's what I'm thinking we'll get, Liz. You know, so that's what I'm hoping that we really want to know why or why not. And so that's why I'm saying maybe we just don't need the next bullet because why or why not? There will, if we ask it enough, um, we're going to get all the reasons why they they love the idea but they can't do it. Yeah. My <laughs> you know, um, like in CPAC, it might be sure we'd love to set up a pot of money, but we can't. Um, Holly, were you trying? Did you have a comment? I was just trying to think of a because I I'm just trying to think of a way of, of another way of sort of wording that. Like, would do you foresee any legal obstacles to? Mm -hmm. um, and I can't. And I can't. But um any legal, legal obstacles to setting aside money for participatory budgeting in your committee. I don't know, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> I think that gets at the same thing, Kali, I agree. You know, just something like that would be, um, it's just, it's not the person's opinion alone, but soliciting them from me, them, that's what I'm looking for. The rules, the laws, the, you, yeah. there's no way we True. can do that or, but I don't know, it was just sort of a thought of the legal, yeah. Of it. What about, and it might be a question for us and not one to ask them because the answer might be lengthy, but maybe what, because limitations and obstacles both have a, a um, baggage with them a little bit. What if we said what rules govern your committee's decision making? Or I'm trying to think how to say it. So for example, um, CPA say, there are state laws that dictate how we can allocate this money. Or CDBG might say, there are federal laws that actually dictate how we can spend this money. Um, well, but, but that I, I wanna, I agree, I'm agreeing with what you're saying, but the, the issue is we should, we should make sure whoever team is talking, we totally understand that CPA can only spend on these four buckets. Right. What we were trying to find out is if they if could they within their charge and within the state law do a set aside a dedication of funds for resident proposals do they think they already could do that if they wanted to or would and then the other side of it is they wanted to do it and then they have to the town council has to then decide on the list you know but we should go in knowing how this is governed so they don't have to right. read the yeah. law. Right. Absolutely. I think generally we do, don't you think? I do, but I don't want them to have to let me explain to you how CPA yeah. works. You I know? totally right. agree with that. That would be a waste of our time. So that's I mean, a question a probably question. for us. Yeah. A question for us rather than a question for the committee uh, member then. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I, I don't potentially delete the whole thing and hear what they say. Um, so, you know, I know I've taken, well, in the, our discussion, rather than just saying, carve out $100,000, call it participatory budget, set up a whole new thing. We've said, could we build on what we've got already? And we may discover it's just as easy, hard to build on what we've got already yeah. <laughs> with, any, with any commitment of funds. Um, we could make everything work better. Absolutely. Could you just change and just simplify? Are, it says, are, the, are there possible other funding sources that could be tapped? Um, is there any reason why they can't be? Yeah. To keep it simple. They might, and then and they'll, if there is, they'll, they'll tell it, they'll, they'll know them. Or what would it take to have access to the, you know? Well, just, is there any reason why that, why, why a set aside couldn't be? arranged yeah besides whether they want to or not is there is there any legal you know just is there any reason why it couldn't be done that's a good one yeah that's a good rewording is, is there any reason why dedicated funds couldn't be yeah yeah there might be a legal restriction or they might not or they might just not want to do it so liz did, can you okay so yeah i'm having trouble so are we we're getting rid of this one and putting more up in this section do it that way you could just follow it up. Are there a possible funding source that could be tapped? Is there any reason why they can't be tapped? Why they might not? Is there any reason why they couldn't be tapped? 
Well, I just, we really need to get, I, it, getting other funding is a different issue than can we dedicate funds, right? Yeah. Right. We just have to keep, I'm not saying take that follow-up off, but I liked your, are there any reasons why a dedicated amount couldn't be set up? I like that wording. Okay. And that's going up Could be a separate here? Board. After, I think it's, it's yeah, either either way. after tapped. <sighs> I thought it was um, after, oh, there we go. Well, I'll, I'll put these in and then you can tell me to move them around. It can also go after this, the last bullet. I, and I've totally forgotten what the end of the sentence is. <laughs> why, a de why dedicated funds could not be set up or could not be specified. All right, then you can delete the next one. Yeah. And then the second one goes. So this one goes. Yeah. This goes. Bye. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of changing all these to numbers? So when we're talking about them, <laughs> um, that's a formatting thing, and it would take me a while to figure out how to do. So we can do it later, but not right now. If you send it to me in Word, I can do it. I can in Word. Oh, I can, I can do it. it. I just need to. It, it would take me three tries to figure it out. And yeah. I'm not so. asking to do it now. I'm just saying maybe for the next version, we might want numbers so we can refer yeah. to what they are. Yep. It's not, I can show you how All to right. do it too. But Here anyway. we are. Thank you. So I would, my vote on this one would be just delete it um, to make the list shorter because I think the next one procedurally, couldn't we keep the periods open longer? Could they be aligned? And then I'm not sure what the last one is. I'm just going down to the last bullet seems to be other sources of money. So oh yeah, that's this this one that we moved up here. <laughs> so I just um, the examples we can find them pretty easily, but I wouldn't take the conversation time up of the examples. Oh. Okay. I think though with Paul there might be an additional question. Are we at the end of this section? Well, let's just say would do would people agree see the highlighted to just delete that yeah i'll move that yeah because we've cop captured above okay and so, then and then the last sentence are we also deleting the last sentence wait what about this one i like that one okay and then are there other town that we've captured because we already put it up in the other i would yeah. yep well, that one gets zapped also okay Okay. That's good because I have to go in about 10 minutes. So that, the academic ones, I'd love to have some input on. Yeah, let me ask you quick, quickly. We can come back to it though. But, but um, if there are any particular questions for Paul as the chief executive, for example, um, inviting him to be think more broadly, are there any other ways that you can imagine that the residents could participate in the budget process that we haven't thought of? Yeah. He knows a lot about other communities and um, just seems like we should take advantage if we get, you know, some one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one time with him to ask him that, something like that. Yeah, maybe, you know, can you envision a way, can you envision a way that the participa participatory budgeting would make your job easier or make your <laughs> job more effective? He always said the opposite. He would... Okay. No, but that's why I keep trying. I keep keep trying to get him to realize. No, it, it it could be it could be better instead of worse. You know. Well, I'm suggesting not saying participatory budgeting because I think we're, as a commission, have moved on. We're just talking. But, uh, John. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, this gets to uh, when we eventually talk about the uh, the draft of objectives to the section B. Uh, and I've been thinking about <clears throat> how it's conceptually different from sections A and C, and it kind of comes out in the lack of questions around the uh, surveys, referenda, and uh, this <clears throat> idea that I've been pushing a little later. I don't know if everybody's caught on, but the idea of creating handles or, or easier ways into budgeting for your 
uninformed citizen. Um, so in other words, uh, what I'm saying is what's to my thinking relevant to section B, what's missing here are any questions that try to elicit uh, whether uh, Paul in particular and others have ideas for how we would do a survey or how we would use a referendum in order to get information about existing budgeting priorities. Whereas most of these questions are about this, the general participatory budgeting concept of having a, a pot of dedicated money to a specific project that people vote on. Um, and, and just more generally, I would say, I'd, I'd like to know if, if the rest of you are really on board. It seems that I've been the one who's been supporting the ideas behind section B of pushing for referenda or creating uh, additional ways in for the ordinary citizen into the budget. And it's really not, um, you know, the traditional participatory budgeting concept with uh, either money from outside or a dedicated pot of money. Well, I think the way I'm looking at that is our, we're kind of the big picture so we're we're doing giving an we're putting together an outline and then this outline will be given to the next group of people who will actually figure out how to how to approach and how to work with the universities and do all that so a lot of the ideas that you're developing which are really cool and exciting um i see another group being responsible for figuring out the specifics on those so that's i've kind of left it really general I think John asking, John's asking a somewhat different question of whether we're interested in opening the subject of not so much participatory residents participating, but would it be helpful to have better ways for the public to understand the budget process? It's a different top, a topic really, but it's in our memo. Is that accurate, John? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the basic question is maybe the, this idea of surveys and referenda uh, and more handles for the public, uh, maybe Paul and, and town staff and the town council, none of them have any time and they're not interested. They get enough information, enough feedback from their district meetings and so forth. Uh, I, I mean, we really ought to, if it's a viable idea, there ought to be uh, some way to get Paul and the town councilors and others interested in it rather than just have it be a, you know, an idea that's thrown out in the, in our report. Kathy? Okay, I have a suggestion on this because Meg, you opened up this and John jumped, I think, rightly on it. So you wanted on, when, when we have Paul in the room, so I'm thinking number one, we have Paul in the room more than once. We have him once where he's focused on resident capital and you open it up with any other ideas of ways of improving participation. So we could have a set of questions that we particularly want feedback from Paul. Right. And John, having you jumped in, I'm wondering if for the next meeting, you could draft a Paul set that starts out this more general and you know, we'd love your reaction to the idea of referendums or polling um, you know, and thoughts on that. So we could open up those broader ideas and get his reaction. And so that, this would be this would be an addendum to the questions we're working on that would be um, meant to address um, what's being proposed in section B. Right, and a sort of bigger picture. And that set might also be a good set to interview Lynn Griesmer if she's president of the council with you know on a ways to improve participation. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And just so I don't forget, I want to get it on record that I'm going to send people a link to Melrose, where I was on the Melrose town for a completely different reason. But their mayor, I assume their mayor wrote it, but he's done that interactive budget. What is the budget? Where does it come from? What does this term mean? In a chit chat thing, you, know, you can just click through it. So it's like a 101 for people who wanted to know about this. So someone invested in that on their budget site. Um, it, it's pretty, it's very cool. I went all the way through well, that, it. That's great Boy, to hear, yeah. That's it, what I would imagine uh, eventually community participation officers would keep up to date and help people to uh, engage more easily, more readily with uh, uh, you know, what are otherwise arcane budgeting issues. So, totally. As a yeah. 
former budget person, if people don't understand the budget, they make up their own narrative and it's usually totally wrong. Yeah. It really helps to share information. So if we get to it, which I don't know, to the, to the memo, I added a section on some of the tools that are available and they might apply here. So for example, the idea of a referendum, there's uh, open source free technology that's available. So it's, people would say, oh, we can't have another whatever. So we might wanna weave in here later some of those um, tools that we've discovered that might facilitate. So my suggestion, I'll, I'll make it more as a proposal, is we're at 429. So I was gonna to delegate to John Fenske a draft of questions that start with the bigger picture. Any okay. other ideas that you might have on increasing participation and referendum? And then Meg, it'll be a place you can drop in. You know, there are some free yeah. tools available, but it's just kind of a separate document than honing in on, you know, do we get any excitement on some of the other stuff we're doing in this first town committees. So yeah, is everyone in favor of that? Yes, um, sure. I would just like to point out that um, what what you said, Meg, about the tools, that's, I think tools are cool, that's, that's well and good. But I think the really tough work, the kind of work that I'm glad Liz has handed off to the successor to this commission uh, <laughs> is devising the right specific questions Right. Uh, you know, and deciding whether it's ranking or yes, no kind of thing. The way things stand now, we come up every once in a while with a, the, the big overwhelming question, yes or no, an override. And it just seems so crude to me. Right, right. But um, I agree with everything you said. And I also agree with Kathy pointing out what time it is. So today we don't even have the option of going after five because Angela is hosting another meeting at five and she said she, we could find another host or Holly, you know, I could have asked you Holly, but I just said, we'll be done by five. I, I, I have know. to go, I'm, unfortunately, because my I have to uh, switch meetings. Yeah, so I wanted to say, okay. knowing that you have to go to suggest that we come back to the academic and the sure. groups. Uh, I like what's there. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm not quite sure what the second one means, but I think I do, um, but I like what's there. Um, <laughs> And I think we should think of people like Tony Maroulis when we think about it, because I think Tony's a good deflector. I like Tony a lot, but he's, yeah. <laughs> we need to get, so, get him uh, on, to, you know, think of ways to get him to think specifically about what we might do with the university or, or, you met, or, or Amherst as well. Yeah, that's kind of what it means. The, I didn't, it's like the, how does the town gown work together on this? Yeah, and, and but, instead of it being a, a, we're not looking to, to pick a fight with the university, we're looking for a way to do something fun together, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I want, thanks, John. Yeah, I have to go, I'm really sorry. It's a, Bye, John. Um, so I wonder if we wanna take, if we're, we've did a really good job of honing, you know, fine tuning these questions uh, for Paul and these other committees there. I don't think you can see my cursor, right? Because I'm nope. not sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we want to divide them up now and uh, in the, both divide ourselves up into pairs um, and, uh, and put some of, give us some specific assignments. Are we, are we done with this draft for the moment? Well, we're I, done. I, Go ahead, John. I was gonna say it, it might be redundant, but I think our conversation evoked um, that we should probably at the end, ironically, because I asked to move that question in the beginning, say any other yeah. strategies you would suggest to increase participation. Yeah. Um, I, it is a little bit redundant, but I think ending on a question like that is also probably um, important. And we might, the a response might be, um, I don't know if we, I don't know if we want to prompt them with the polling, but a response might be we need um, more information from residents on a regular basis. Yeah. I, I like I like this and I like the beginning and ending uh, book uh, bookends. It's it's really nice. So I want and to I look. I'm also looking at these questions, although the font is on the smaller side on yeah. my screen. But I'm thinking we got them down to enough of a set that they can be the bottom half of a page with a blurb up on top, you know, what we said about keeping it to one page. So we, and then academic stakeholders, I had one idea to add to this, but it's not, it's around my head. Might this be of interest of professors um, and bringing students in to make it a professor and student project? Mm -hmm. um, 
So let's, before we go down to academic, I wanna just do a check of where we are in the meeting and what, um, I'm sug suggesting the here are the three things that we might do now, keep going with these questions, even though John wanted us to not do academic until he was gonna be here. Uh, but we could continue the questions. We could assign uh, people in pairs to pick, wait, I keep showing with my cursor, but you can't see it, to, I don't think we should plan to hold any of these conversations until after our next meeting, which is January 7th. Correct. And the question is, do we want to schedule any for later in January and February between now and then? And if so, we need to assign us in pairs. Uh, I think what we agreed to do this in pairs. I think, that, I think going to that's a really good idea. And then the addition I'd make to that is we, Liz will send us this and whoever the pair is on CPA or on CDB, takes the shot at the one pager for that. So we're looking, we're taking, we've got the questions down at the bottom reworked. So we're looking at that. So we'd be ready to go to do interviews when we leave the next meeting. Uh-huh. Okay. So does so everybody agree with, is that yeah. okay with everybody? Any comments? Um, I was just gonna say, I think, you know, in terms of meeting people, we wanna focus on the town officials first that this, this group, this is really our, our core group, and then move on to the other two. So we can table the conversation about the other uh, two sets of questions um, and then come back to that at a later date and focus on getting the meetings and questions ready for the oh, others. Right, so we're- good. Okay. Yes. Great. We're stop, so we're talking about, I keep moving my cursor. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. No, no, we share, done with this? share, but could you move your cursor at the, it says town officials, staff committees includes. So we're okay. talking about this set of people here, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So now I decided not to try to set this up ahead of time. Do people want to pair off and claim one that they'd like to do or two? I would love to do CPA because I'm in the middle of a conversation with him, but that may be why I'm not the right person, but. Yeah, I also am having some issues and conversation with CPA at the moment. So I'm probably not the best person to engage with that group. And CDDG obviously would, I mean, my husband's on it. My next door neighbor is on it. So I don't know if I'm, if well, that's appropriate for me. Which would you like? I'll, I'll take whatever's left. Any, Kathy? Okay, I'm, I would volunteer for any of the three um, to be- Three, say them again. I see more than three. Resident capital requests. Uh-huh. CPA and CDBG. Those are the three we're talking about right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the town manager. Well, the town manager is the person who is he has to be in the room when you talk about resident capital requests because he oversees all capital requests. He has to be in the room. But don't, do we want a conversation with just him in the room? Yes, that's what I thought we talked about a separate conversation with good. him. Okay, the good. So, and, so we yeah. have the C, CPA, CB, CDBG and the resident capital requests and then the town manager also, right? Right, so I am just for the time being focused on these seven questions or however we have that are earmarked to pieces of money, <laughs> all right? Not on big big picture, right. just so I am saying I will do any of those three and I'm willing to do as many as two, but not all three. So I am, I am, I, my conflicts are I'm a, liaise, a council liaison to CPA and I am the chair of JCPC, but I have zero control over resident capital requests. I'm not staff. So I don't, it's not really a conflict. And I know very little about CDBG, but I'd be happy to do that interview. So I'm just volunteering for any of the three and I'm willing to do two. So given that I'm willing to take on communicating with each of you in the next few two or three days, 
if that would facilitate this process of which one you want to do and even also if there's someone two people would like to work together do you know how to do a doodle poll meg yes, i do because if you do a doodle poll it'll come back to you but you can put each of our names and then you can say check the committees you'd be willing to do good and i'm gonna do that i do know how to do that great idea i just think yeah okay and then you can all talk to each with each other if there's somebody you'd really like to do it with uh i don't think it really matters much i'm happy to partner with anybody but um okay i will do that before hopefully tomorrow um so at our next meeting we're going to come back and at our next meeting we're going to fine tune our plan for these first set of interviews and continue on with the with liz's list of questions for ac academics and so on and then the only thing that does if you can get the doodle poll results back to us. So what I heard Liz say is, <laughs> Liz, I heard you <laughs> indirectly to say a couple of them are more problematic for you, but maybe resident capital requests isn't problematic. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I can do that one. And, you know, I was, I was actually starting to put you down for that one. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, so all I was thinking, Meg, is if, if we can get before the next meeting, potential teams, you could assign yeah. one of them to do the one, the draft of the one, you know, just so we can be looking at a document. So I'm, what I'm offering is to do the doodle poll and then to create the teams. And if I need to, in consultation with the phone, I'll phone you up and say, would you rather do this or that? I'll okay, that. Maybe, maybe in the doodle poll, you could set it up that we do a one, a number one, a number two, and a number three. Choice voting. <laughs> what? Rank you know, yeah, no, like rank choice, so that if your top preference, you know, exactly, to reveal your preference. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I just like to volunteer for CDBG because I think I'm too close to CPA, and I certainly don't want to be working with the town manager on on these issues. I'm I'm just uh, CDBG would be my my top choice. <laughs> I know it. very little about that one. Great. Thanks for volunteering, Holly. I wasn't sure if you were going to have time or not, but thank you. Um, okay, I think we have a plan for this, and I, just to make sure, I hope don't want to be repeating things too much, but we're not doing any of these actual conversations until after our next meeting on January 7th to find sure. our plan and make sure that we all like the one-page cover sheet. And everybody is going to uh, create their own one-pager once these have been assigned. Is that reasonable to do for the next meeting? I think it has to be. Um, I wait are we talking about the one pager that i sent that says intro summary uh well i'm hoping we're going to get to look at that now the one pager yeah the intro summary and the questions that's what we may not be able to do by I next yeah the, the that's, that's one point i'm a little confused on is wouldn't the one pager be the same um, for so most of these conversations? I, I think it needs to be the same so that everybody is getting, being told the same, has the same background. But the problem is if we really want it all on one page, this has to be dramatically cut. I'm not so sure. Oh, I know, I know. I mean, I think if two sides of a page is perfectly fine. But I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff in here. Also, you know, I was a little bit concerned about, um, we're kind of, um, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but we're kind of telling people, here's, here's the conclusion we've already reached. And now we're coming back to talk to you to have you support this conclusion that we've already reached. So I'm wondering if like all of this just is not included and say that we're, you know, we're looking at some different ways of working with what we've got. That's why we're here to talk with you rather than Maybe go too much into here's 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 the conclusions we're currently drafting. Maybe we reword what you have here to say one of the things we're discussing is ways to build on what we've already got, and that's what we're here to talk to you about, as well yeah. as you know. So it, you're right. I think you like here's where we're going. Do you hate it? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I can, I'm happy to go through and, you know, basically I just cut and paste this off of Kathy's document. I'm happy to go through and do some serious editing on this. I can get, I can get all of this down to 
um, you know, a, a third of a page. Wow. So that people can know here's, you know, your basic, here's, here's, you know, what a participatory budgeting is. Here's why we're doing this. Here's what we're thinking. And then if people get into the conversation in their interviews and say, oh. you know, I really don't understand this. Can you explain it more? Then um, we can, but. So my only, we can give, uh, thank you, Liz, for offering to do that. And should we give you any feedback that we have having read it? I have one feedback, which is it seems to be a disconnect to talk about what participatory budgeting is and then what we're recommending is clearly not that. I think we need at least a sentence that said about the pandemic. Well, and I would put it me, after um, the hmm? John? I, yeah, I, I think in implicit in what a number of us have been saying is that we want to have it pitched more or less this is what other towns have called participatory budgeting. And we see our charge as imagining how Amherst can achieve some of these objectives. In other words, we're trying to imagine participatory budgeting for Amherst. And we're not, you don't want to prejudge anything. You don't want to say, this is what we're doing, or this is where we're going to go. Uh, our mission is really to see how the participatory budgeting concept could work together with existing structures. Well, we're not proposing anything that's, we're, we're proposing modifying the opportunity for residents to make requests or to submit proposals, but they're not actually voting on anything. Just seems to me that our, our project changed after the nine well, hiatus. The the document right now has voting in it, Meg, because you asked to have it in. Right. Um, it does well, have voting in there it. There is a tool if people want to use it, but. No, no, it, it has specific that we would solicit proposals and in some way get people to vote on. It, it has that, I'm not saying it's going to remain in the document, but I, th I think what we're just saying is, um, you know, we're at a point of trying to figure out what might work in Amherst, you know, imagining and if the sentence, you know, given the pandemic and we're considering the following and want to talk to you about it. Um, I just think we should say considering what's possible given the current climate, right. because it's definitely changed things. I mean, if we weren't in this dire situation, you know, we'd, we'd be out talking to foundations maybe, I don't know what we'd be doing, but you know, anyway, okay. So so, and in condensing it, Liz, the if we're in the room with CPA, you don't need B and C. Right. You know, so just in thinking of, you know, the top page of talking to academics would be in addition to other things exploring, you know, so I'm just saying that the top half would be different um, from the general conversation with Paul. So that will make the top half shorter. Right. Good. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not going to try to edit this right now, but I will. Um, what you've you've just the feedback that you've given, I will edit it based on that, and then I'll send it out again. Great. Before the before, John, probably okay. hopefully before <laughs> this weekend, but probably not. Okay. I am. I'm struggling a little bit, and I, I think um, to what Meg said that there that it's a there's two sections. Is um, I both don't want to eliminate what formal participatory budgeting might look like, because then we're almost giving away. Uh, it's like we're in a negotiation, and we're we're already have moved all the way to the other side. So I do like keeping something about what. Um, Kind of the most the purest form of participatory budgeting is but then on the other hand i think we really should keep a b and c because for example with cpa a a fruitful result of the conversation might be that we need to get um students high school college elementary whatever they are um, involved in the cpa process so that they talk to their parents and talk to their neighbors and um, we get more proposals. Mm -hmm. So I almost, I almost think that the second part is, I think that both are essential and I don't know how to um, transition from one to the other. Cause I think in a CPA conversation, you actually might want to bring up 
how could the university be involved? Yeah. Or in a university conversation, you might want to bring up, um, I don't know, um, something about the budgeting process. So um, I want to note that it's, we have 10 minutes left in our time and we have a couple of things to do. Um, let me see if I have understand what we're going to do between now and the next meeting. We're going to very quickly have a doodle poll and in conversations with you and with you with each other, assign in pairs uh, people to take on these particular assignments. The, the, uh, the town ones, not going down to academia. And every, each pair by our next meeting will um, prepare a version of the questions and the cover sheet for that particular interview. Is that accurate? I thought um, that I was going to uh, uh, cut back this cover sheet, send it around, and then I don't know if we'll need to have uh, feedback given on the at the next meeting on it. Wait, that's in January, isn't it? Um, yeah, I thought we were going to discuss it at oh, the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that we will um, discuss it on the seventh, and very soon thereafter, each pair will create their version. Or we by, by that point, we will have essentially done it ourselves. Kathy, the, the pair the pair part could start where the questions start and with a blank place plop in the beginning and then just thinking about the cpa thinking about the you know so we said each of those sentences needs to be modified so we're ready to pop in the why are we here yeah i can i'll put a uh, parentheses in it saying you know fill in your you know <laughs> okay good so um everybody so we're all set right Yep. Uh, we uh, don't have time to go over the document, but it's making progress. Kathy, are you still up for if anybody has any more edits? Yeah, this is what I would suggest on the document is these interviews are going to be crucial to what is emerges as a document that becomes more of what I would call a working document that, you know, if we encounter strong can't do this, can't do that. We're going to have to write stronger on how we think you either could do it or we're going to drop drop something, right? Um, so the main thing right now would be um, if something is completely missing, I tried to restructure it. Liz gave some useful reader thing that something came too late and it was embedded in something else to move it up. Um, and the last meeting, just so people remember, since it was a while ago, um, I plopped in something up at the top on executive summary where we said, right. even if nothing else happens, we think the periods to apply should be kept open longer. It would be nice to coordinate them. It would be nice to provide some staff to support proposals, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Those were bottom line kinds of things that we were going to recommend even, right. you know, so I, those are up at the top now from my notes from last time, you know, we, we wrote them in. So I think doing much more revising 